Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. Today I'm out here trying to get caught up on some stuff. I've got some off time coming up and got some projects I'm going to be getting out. But today I want to do a video that a lot of you have requested. Uh, a lot of folks have messaged me uh, just with questions about different machines, adjustments, and that type of thing. So whether you have one of the higher end machines or whether you have one of the lower end machines, the laser engravers that we use have a lot of the same engineering built into them and a lot of the same adjustment can cause you problems. So what today, what I'm gonna do is I've got a machine and folks asked me to do this. I have totally messed up the adjustments on it in order to show you how to get it back into adjustment. So if that's something you're interested in, guys, stick around and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fix this machine that I have got way out of whack. All right, guys, first off, before we get started, shameless plug. If you're not, you need to be checking out Steve and I's uh, lives on Sunday night at 7 p.m. Uh, this is where this video originated. Uh, we had a bunch of guys in the group in the live chat that asked if I could do a video basically showing how to fix a machine that's out of adjustment that either won't cut circles or can't cut straight lines or you just got, it's just doing all this wonky stuff that is not in light burn. And so what I've done is I pulled down one of my more recent machines. And uh, the reason being is this one's not one that I have fine tuned yet. So I went ahead and pulled it down and I have totally misadjusted it. Uh, but only one, only one wheel right now. This is, I just want to show you how much one wheel being out of adjustment can uh, make a difference. So here's some results. Uh, I wanted to make sure I had it messed up before I started the video. So I did a little test to see how bad out of adjustment it was. And like I said, I've only, I've only over tightened one of the eccentric nuts on one of the wheels. And I wanna show you guys this results here. So if I can get it up there. Now this is a line, so it's gonna be kinda of hard to see. Uh, but you can look right here and you can tell my, my circles, those are supposed to be perfect circles. The lettering, you can see the lettering is kinda of skewed a little bit, all right? Coming down here, all right, those, those are supposed to be perfect circles. They're not, they're egg-shaped. If you notice the space in between the, the, the lines, those are supposed to all be at 2.5 millimeters. All my spacing is at 2.5 millimeters. And you can see some of the spacing's messed up. Now, one thing I do wanna point out, this wheel adjustment is not as noticeable when doing squares as it is when doing circles. So just keep that in mind. Uh, this is basically, I went in, drew a circle and just, 2.5 millimeters outward just kept re recreating that circle to get that pattern and you can see how there, there's some sharp edges on the circles where the lines don't quite meet up circles are a little egg shaped and all that so just remember that look because guys if you're if you're cutting your shapes on your machine and you see this uh, that is a telltale that either the belts or the rollers the wheels whichever you want to call them the eccentric nuts are out of out of adjustment now there's a hundred ways to do this, guys. This is my way. Uh, Y'all have asked for me to show you how I do it. This is how I do it. So I'm going to move you over to the machine and just kind of give you an idea of what's going on with the machine, and then we're going to fix it. All right, guys. So what I have done is this one wheel, and I chose this one because it's easy to get to. It's easy for you guys to see without me having to flip the machine up on its top and all that. So this is the Acemer P1, and I... Like I said, it was not doing this. It, it, it was a little out of adjustment. It needed some adjustment because, like I said, at the factory, they put it together, they ship it, and these are adjustments that you, as the, as the recipient, as the end user, need to be aware of and need to be capable of doing. Okay, so one thing that you'll notice with this one, I've got this wheel, like I said, it is way tight, all right? So you'll notice when I pull the gantry, you should be able to see there's a little bit like, like the left side of the gantry is trying to move before the right side does. Uh, you can see the gantry actually trying to bend just a little bit because that wheel is so tight. Uh, the way these wheels work is they run in this channel right here. Okay, a lot of the machines use the same technique. Some of them use a rod, some of them use a channel. Same principle, okay? You have this is supposed to keep the machine tracking straight. Uh, it is supposed to keep it tracking, but at the same time, not offer enough resistance to cause this gantry 
to twist and rock like it's doing. That's what's transferring into the cut. That's why I'm getting these odd shaped lines. So the best and easiest way I know to tell you guys is to just gently push on the gantry. If you notice that it's putting up a substantial amount of resistance, that's, that's not good. You don't want the gantry one side to be moving and the other side sitting still. That's a telltale sign that something on this side is not adjusted correctly. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull it back and forth and let you look at the gantry and kind of watch the, uh, the bend to it. When I let off of it, you can see guys, it's that side over there is holding way more than this side, okay? So that tells me that one of these needs to be adjusted. Now, I kind of cheated on this one because I know which one I, I took out of adjustment and it's gonna be this guy, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna just move that nut. And what I wanna try to do is you wanna get it to the point to where the wheel is tracking in the center of this channel. And you can kind of eyeball that and get it lined up. And you wanna, you wanna also have it to where when you push the gantry, neither side is lagging behind, okay? If this one's a little too tight and this one's a little too tight, that's not as bad as if this one's right and this one's way too tight or this one's too loose and that one's too tight. You will exaggerate the effects. And what I'm doing, guys, is I'm, I'm pushing on this side of the gantry to see if this side moves without twisting. And then I'm pushing on this side of the gantry to, to check the same thing because you don't want, if you put pressure at either side, you don't want the gantry to twist. The job of this linkage, guys, is to pull that belt underneath there and make everything synchronized, okay? So this linkage could also be a problem, but on this machine, I've already adjusted the linkage. Uh, but the way you would do that would be just to loosen that nut right there, make sure that your frame is square, and then tighten it back, those little grub screws that are on that linkage. But as long as the linkage is correct, belt tension is correct, and you, don't, and you have the rollers adjusted, you should have a smooth, running machine. I'm gonna pull that one in just a little more. It still feels a little sticky. Okay, so I think that's gonna be pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run that same test that I did, but I'm gonna run it over here on the right side and I'm gonna change it to adjusted as far as the text goes. That way you guys can, uh, can see what we got going on and see the difference that it makes. So I'm gonna frame that out and make sure my material doesn't need to be repositioned. Let me just move the grave over. All right, let's see how that looks. Bring it up just a little, and then I'm gonna send it. So what I'm doing here, I'm not doing a real powerful burn this is a lower power output, but I want it just enough that it marks the material, but I want as fine of a line as I can because the finer the line, the more detail in the error or the correct calibration, will, it, it just, it's easier to see. Uh, if you're doing a cut where you've got a real thick line, sometimes those slight variations are harder to see. So I go, like with this one, I'm running about 50% output and 50 speed just to give me a good fine line Make sure the machine is completely focused because you don't want those thick focal lines as well. And then I'm just gonna run these same two patterns and see what kind of results I get from that. Uh, if everything is adjusted properly, one, you should, the machine shouldn't, you shouldn't hear it grunting or whining or you know, any kind of noises. It should run quiet, it should run smooth. Uh, and when you get this cut done, all your lines should match up good and the spacing should be accurate. So here we go. Let's see what let's see how well I did. All right. So that's after our adjustment, guys. And you can see there my, my lines appear to be evenly spaced. It's really hard to discern where the line starts and stops. I still have just a touch right here at the very bottom where you can almost tell where the line starts to stop. So it wouldn't hurt to uh, do a little more adjustment, but look over here, guys. This is what we were working with. This is with that one eccentric nut out of adjustment. That's what the burn looked like. All right, so I'm just gonna lay my material back down here because we're gonna do one more 
uh, test. And guys, this, this thing got hot in Alabama, so if I'm sweating, I apologize. Uh, air conditioning should be coming soon. Okay, one thing you gotta watch for too is such as right here. If you notice, guys, I've got a wheel apparently on the back of this gantry on this side, one of the wheels is not contacting where it's supposed to. And I suspect that's what's causing that little variation that we have. And on this machine, there's kind of a shroud back here that covers up one of them. And I probably was being lazy and didn't get in here good and adjust this guy. So I'm gonna adjust it out towards the rail just a little bit, just so it bites that rail a little more. Uh, this one on this side appears to be riding the way it's supposed to. Uh, the one on the back, back here, it's riding a little far out. So we're just going to pull it toward the inside some. See if I can get that little bit of wobble there out. Okay, that seems like that got most of it. Still got just a, just a touch. All right, sometimes you have to get under the bottom of them. Uh, it appears that the bottom ones may be the ones giving me trouble now. All right, so that. That appears to be it right there, guys. So we're gonna run that test pattern again and see how that does. So first I'm gonna rehome the machine because I have been messing with it. I don't want to cause a collision. Uh, then I'm going to frame that out and adjust my material so that it's in that blank spot right there. Okay, here we go. Okay, apparently I got it a little too tight. <laughs> yes. So this is where you have to have some patience when dealing with these things, guys. Uh, I've actually went a little too tight apparently because I'm back to egg shaped. So this is where, like I said, patience. If you don't have patience, you may not need a laser. Okay. Uh, I thought, I thought I'd done pretty good on that, but apparently I did. So I'm going to use my, my, my patience here <laughs> and readjust this again. Uh, and you'll, you're not always going to get it right the first go guys. All right, guys, after a few more minutes and a little back and forth, I have got the adjustments to where I believe I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run this same burn pattern again. But now this time, guys, I'm going an extra step. I've run it each burn. I've set it to do four passes. And the reason I'm doing this is because if the machine is still out of adjustment, out of those four passes, I should start to see some shadowing and the line not hitting the same location. So I'm gonna do that just to, just to make sure everything is consistent because even if you've got it to where it'll make circles, there are times where each pass, you know, the machine could move, it could shift from side to side. So the true test is to do this burn, but set it to run four passes and see if I get any crazy wide lines or any variations from one pass to the next pass to the next pass. So that's what I'm doing now. And it'll take just a second for this to burn. And then we should be able to confirm that the machine is properly adjusted and ready to go. Like I said, guys, this is not something that any particular brand of machine is, is, is prone to. Any of these machines that uses the guide rollers like this, 
they need to be adjusted. Now, some of, some of the machines may be better adjusted from the factory than others. I'm not gonna dispute that, but they all can either be out of adjustment or need adjusting. So when you buy a machine and you put it together, one of the first things that I recommend is set yourself up a little test like this and go ahead and, and burn it and see if, if the machine is consistent, see if the machine is, is cutting square, square, and circles, circular. And as long as it is, then get into it, guys, and, and have fun. But there's nothing more frustrating than when you get your new machine, you're trying to do these engraves, and you got Mitch Max lines and so forth. Uh, it, it'll drive you nuts. I have a lot of people, because I do sell my designs on Etsy, and people will buy my designs and be like, hey, your file is not working, you know, it's out of shape, uh, the lines don't touch, it won't cut them out. And, you know, they try to blame that on me when it's, it's not me, guys. Even new machines need adjustments. Uh, so uh, I usually tell them to do these tests with their machine and it should show them what the problem is and that it's the machine and not the file. So that is what I recommend you guys. Like I said, set you up this. All it is is circles that get larger and squares that get larger. I do a 2.5 millimeter spread because it's easier for me to see deviations when they're closer together like that. Uh, you can even go closer. You can go with a one millimeter spread if you want between each circle. Uh, but this is kind of my go-to for adjusting machines. I have found that it pretty much will tell me what's going on with the machine when I do this and uh, I can go in and fix it. So like I said, guys, the thing that I'm looking for now is good, clean lines that match up, evenly spaced, and shaped the way they're supposed to. So here we are. All right, there's my squares. Squares look good. I don't see any issues with the squares. And there's my circles. And guys, I can't even tell where it started and where it stopped. But you can see those lines are evenly spaced circular in shape and uh, definitely uh, circles more so than when we started all right so so i'm going to show you side by side if i can guys uh when we started that's what we were doing okay that's one roller out of adjustment right there that's all that well, well there were some other little adjustments i needed to make but the big one was that one roller that i really I mean, it was out of adjustment. All right, so if you start seeing this with your machine, then you need to check the things that I just showed you. Uh, belt tension, the synchronizing bar down there with the little timing connector that has the grub screws, as well as the rollers, and just make sure that those eccentric nuts are tightened the way they need to be. All right, guys, one more plug. All right, Sunday nights, 7 p.m., uh, Steve and I do our live. Uh, go ahead and go check out the channel, add that to your calendar. Uh, we, dis we discuss things like this. Uh, we diagnose computers while we're chatting with you guys and kind of give you advice on how to fix things. And that was the reason that this came about. Uh, like I said, that is how the machine is supposed to cut right there. All right, so that's what you want. If your machine's doing the egg-shaped lines or if the lines aren't connecting, if you can look at this and see where the line starts and where the line stops, then you got an issue, okay? And a lot of machines, you won't notice it on 90% of the files that you cut. You won't notice it until you start doing some intricate work or something like a snap together box or something like that. That's when you're gonna realize that you've got some really big sways in your tolerances. Uh, and if you'll do this test, it, I promise you, this will show you if you've got a problem. Uh, because as that, especially with circles, there's so many movements involved in making a perfect circle that if there's a hang up anywhere, you're, you're going to end up with an off shaped circle. Okay, so I hope this helps guys. Like I said, this was a product of our lives. So if you're one of those folks that asked me to do this demonstration and to mess up one of my machines to show you how to fix it, then I hope you like this. I hope you appreciate it. And if you haven't already guys, hit that subscribe button, more content like this and testing out new machines, trying out new things, new methods. That's what the Clack Shack's all about. And then of course I throw in the other stuff too with the, uh, the whole living in the country thing with the chickens and all that if you're into that. So, but if you hadn't already guys, hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. So have a good day.